All right, let's get into it. <laughs> sure, yeah. Hey, let's flop it. Yeah, yeah. It's big right. movies today, man. Mm-hmm. Big movies today. You know, big movies that years ago, they would have been safe bets. would have killed. I mean, who would have thought that an Indiana Jones movie mm-hmm. would have flopped at the box office? Yeah, bomb. Yeah. Bombed. Bombed at the box office. I mean, even, even the shittiest one. Did $100 million on his opening weekend. Did better. Yeah, this did, what, like $60 million? $60 million, yeah. And a movie that cost, what, $300 million to make? Probably over, too. What, to make Harrison Ford look 30? <laughs> <laughs> you know, is that how much that de aging process took? <laughs> Apparently, make him look like a ghoul. Yes, to make yeah. him look like a ghoul, he lost that much money, yeah. <laughs> yeah, years ago, man, that would have been, been fine. Of course, you know, the big one that everybody's talking about, the one that has everybody on this discussion about things flopping, is The Flash. Yep. You know, that was supposed to be the best superhero movie ever. Mm-hmm. And even if it wasn't, oh, it's going to kill up the box it's office. It's still great, yeah. I was saying that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was one of those people. I said, look, I don't know how, this, how, how the movie is, but oh, this thing's going to kill. It's going to make money. It's going to make money. Highest grossing DCEU film. Yeah, sure. yeah it's, gonna be, it's probably going to be the best performing DCE, uh, ED, FU, whatever it is. <laughs> it's called it is. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the DC. <laughs> yeah, you know, everybody's talking about how this was a guarantee to be huge. Yeah, no matter what, this is probably the 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 the, the most high profile. Bomb. Honestly, that sounds like they don't respect. Uh, <laughs> it honestly sounds like they don't respect the integrity of the people who watch it. And again, it shows because as they stop listening to, as they stop listening to the people. You know, there's this, there's this thing swirling around, this idea swirling around that they just want to turn people into a market and then into an oligarchy where they own people and they own their minds. Like, the only reason why they a lot of companies go along with a lot of people and what they say and do at first is to then buy stock, essentially, because interest, your interest as a person builds interest in the market. That's why people pay time for commercials. That's why time is a commodity. But, uh, yeah, it, it, <laughs> when a lot of companies get big, they stop caring. And, you know, DC has long res- disrespected their people. That's why I'm sti- I stick with Marvel. It's not it's Superman stronger than Iron Man. No, it's Marvel respects me a little bit more of the summer right here and it's probably gonna be one of the biggest box office bombs of all time yeah yep uh no one's really shocked by this but this is the summer where pixar had his first big bomb yeah and this isn't even doing terribly because it didn't cost 200 300 million dollars like all these other movies That's good. but still though very much a disappointment yeah of course and who would have thought that we see the day where a transformers movie did not do well wait i mean this just came and went yep pretty much and at the what it was the number one for that weekend after that everyone forgot yep and just because you're number one doesn't mean anything. No, it doesn't. No, no. you just because you're number one, Why you still got a budget that you got to fulfill, mm-hmm. that you got to meet back. Mm-hmm. So if you cost three hundred million dollars and you're opening up with a, a measly sixty million, mm-hmm. no, and, and the way things are going today, you're not going to make it. Chances are you're not going to make it, mm-hmm. even even back your production budget. <laughs> yeah. So what is going on? Is it blockbuster fatigue? Maybe, maybe. But you know, I'm gonna tell you this. Uh, we're going to get into a deep dive of why these movies are bombing right now, and some of these things you already know. You already know. Sure. And some of these things we'll say, and then you'll have something to add to it, I'm sure. So we're looking forward to seeing what the chat has to say about this, what the community has to say. But I will tell you this before we get really into it. Just coming from somebody who is a little older and has you know, lived through many, many, many summers of blockbusters. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm a, in fact, I am a child of the blockbuster. I was a, a small boy, five or six years old when yeah. Spielberg pretty much changed the landscape of the blockbuster right, summer. Right. Uh, I will tell you right now, after having seeing the you know the, the the blockbuster as we know it in its in its infancy uh movies just don't feel that special anymore sure you know uh looking at these films today you know a transformers movie or even an indiana jones movie you know those movies would have been events yep but they don't seem eventful anymore they don't seem special anymore so you know that's coming from me from my own experience because when i was, is marvel to blame i don't know I was younger man you know when, when when you had a blockbuster come out uh those movies were strategically timed to come out at a particular moment mm-hmm. and had these huge marketing blitz to where they were, they were must sees. Yep. They were events. You stopped for them. Uh, today to get to the discussion now, mm-hmm. uh, it's something that we've been talking about. It's simply a case of too much. Mm. Oh yeah. It's too many hundred million dollar. I mean, that's being, you know, low, 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 <laughs> low for a lot of these movies. Yeah. yeah. Low balling it, but there's too many hundred million dollar plus movies. And if we really want to get into it, we're talking about 200 million plus. Yeah, it almost feels like 250. Like that, that seems to be like the common number, 250 million. That is true. That's the number that they're always reporting. Yeah. 
$250 million, man, or plus, you know, it's, it's just so many blow it budget movies that are coming out right now. Mm-hmm. And this is what I did. So, you know, as I said, somebody who's lived through, you know, a lot of blockbuster summers, man, with, uh, with movies and somebody that, that loves, that, that loves movies because. Recordings just got better. Hey, it's Dana from StreamYard. I'm so excited to announce I'm that local recording. You know, a lot of blockbuster summers, man, with uh, with movies and somebody that that loves that, that loves movies because summers really define my love of film. Sure, of course. Um, I went back and looked at one of the biggest summers that had a, a huge impact on my life, and I took this back to uh, uh, well, first of all, we, before I take it back, let's just look at June of 2023, where we are right now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which a lot of us predicted it would be. It would be a bloodbath. Yeah, if you look at if you look at uh, uh, June of 2023, you know we had. We have so many movies, you know, uh, uh, across the universe, uh, Spider-Man across the universe, you know, Transformers, Rise of the Beast, Wait, uh, the Flash, as we talked about, Elemental, mm-hmm. Indiana Jones. Uh, and if you want to know how these came out, like, so look at the dates here. Across the Spider-Verse came out June 2nd. Yeah. Transformers, Rise of the Beast came out June 9th. Mm-hmm. The Flash, June 16th. Elemental, also on June 16th. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They had a whole week that they could have just re- re- staggered that and released sure. one of those. Sure. But then we go to June 30th, and uh, that's where we end up getting uh, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. So these pretty much came out back to back to back. Mm-hmm. On top of each other. On top of each other. So let's go back to a simpler time. <laughs> let's go back to the summer that had a huge impact on me. I was a perfect age, the perfect target audience for these blockbuster summer films. Let's go back to 1984. Okay. And in 1984, you had on June 1st, Star Trek Three, The Search for Spock come out. Mm-hmm. Now, that wasn't the biggest movie of that summer. Sure. The biggest movie of that summer was Ghostbusters. Hey, let me see a ghost. Get on. Try to kill the, the main man. Look they at almost that. kill a they, lot of people. They really movie. do. Yeah. <laughs> like the mayor was right about them. They were kind of a menace, man. They're a bunch of schlubs <laughs> trying to be action heroes. <laughs> that's what they are. Even the smartest smart. charm. Yeah, with that, no, that, that's, that, that is, man. Even the smartest one out of them was like just uh, stupid. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so Ghostbusters came out on June 8th. Mm-hmm. Now, also on June 8th, there was another big movie that came out. If you get it wet, it will multiply. All that from water? They got wet? No, plain water. No, that's Gremlins. Yeah. Now, you're probably thinking right now, well, it's the same thing. Uh, Star Trek Three came out on June 1st, and not, not only did, did a, a, a big block, blockbuster come out a week later, but two came out sure, sure. on the same day, Completed. Ghostbusters and Gremlins. Right. So we seem to have the same glut that we are experiencing now. So what's the difference? Well, I'll tell you what the difference is. Uh, sure, Ghostbusters and Gremlins were released on the same day, but after Star Trek Three was released and after the uh, Ghostbusters and Gremlins came out, they're only, they didn't have that much competition. That was it. That was it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, as far as big budget blockbusters go, that was it. The only thing that they, there was only one other thing that was even close to being a competitor. Mm. Yeah. I had to talk in broken English. That's why I was trying. Uh, yes, it is. Because that man didn't talk like that at all. Listen, if, he, if I want a wise, sage Asian man to teach me, he better talk he like better that. Talk. He better talk in broken English. <laughs> he's not authentic if he's not. Yeah, because if he came out like, hey, buddy, you all right? Like, nah, like, you, know, you don't no, know shit. No, no, no. No, I want a nice racist accent when it comes to, hey. Daniel son. I a teacher, you. A karate. Uh, karate. Uh. Uh, come out bowing and uh that's karate kid yeah classic so the karate kid that was you know what not only was that the only thing they had to deal with in june mm-hmm. but that came out weeks later oh, that came okay. out june 22nd so there you go yeah and they all had wiggle room they had they all their own audiences yeah room to move yeah that was it mm-hmm. in 1984 mm-hmm. after that they didn't have any other they had some other movies that you know about that were big movies but they weren't blockbusters they blockbusters. weren't tempo movies right, right you had purple rain that came out in july mm-hmm. july 27th you had revenge of the nerds july 20th okay uh, a tightrope um, uh, is a movie that came out. Uh, some of y'all don't even know what that movie is. That came out in August. Okay. Those are the rest of the big movies of the summer. That was it. That was it. Mm-hmm. Uh, July, July, 20, 20, uh, July 2023, mm-hmm. you got Oppenheimer <laughs> and Barbie coming out. Sure. And right after that, when they're done, no idea the power I represent and how it ends. That's a. Uh, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning, Part One. Part one. Yeah, <laughs> after, you know but that. So, doing Part One. Uh, I believe July is going to be pretty crowded too. Sure, sure. Maybe not as much as June, but it'll be crowded. Yeah, it's yeah, it's leveling, leveling off. But compared mm-hmm. to you know years ago, like 
June was pretty front loaded with your big tentpole blockbusters. That's where you had your big sci fi, your fantasy film, your big special effects film, mm -hmm. uh, maybe something animated, yeah, action, and then, movie. action movie. And then, you know, you got like maybe two or three and it leveled off after that. Mm -hmm. And that was it. So today it, it's, it's so crowded, man. And honestly, these movies are predicted to even do better because one, they don't have too much competition. Right. right. Uh, two, they're a little bit different, except for Mission Impossible. But, you know, everybody keeps saying that Tom Cruise is an old-fashioned entertainer, man. He's, our, so. he's yeah. our last big movie star that's doing yeah. this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. And a lot of stars aren't important anymore. No. You know, a lot of people are saying it's going to... Just like Bruno Mars is a, is a, one of the last people who actually would get on stage and actually, actually, actually uh, perform. Like, like him... Like there are very few actual performers who can actually adjust on stage. He can perform in a studio and on stage, and he can adjust the songs and do things. Not every artist can do that. They just hope you sing along. They don't perform. Going to be their big bet for being uh, the big movie of the summer. Uh, Super I always Herber. respect people. I thought I'd oh. stay over tonight. Why? Because we're girlfriend boyfriend. To do what? I'm actually not sure. That's Barbie, man. Okay. A lot of people putting that. Of course, Super Mario Brothers. Is huge. I, mean, I think that's gonna be the biggest movie. That's gonna probably be, no. That yeah. is. Yeah, that, that is. But that is. like for the rest of the year, I mean, this is already. They're saying this is gonna easily outpace Oppenheimer. Oh yeah, because it's just more broad appeal. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Everybody keeps thinking because they're movie buffs or movie fans. You know, everybody puts all this faith in Christopher Nolan, which he makes great films. But you know, uh, it's, you know I, I mean, exactly. I, I wouldn't say in the last ten years, but back in the two thousands, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. Tenet, I was not the hugest I, fan of. I, the more I think about, it, the more I hate that movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like to use the word pretentious. That is a pretentious piece of yeah. shit right there. Yeah, you, you look, your biggest <laughs> your biggest movies in July are going to be Barbie and, uh, and Mission, Impossible. Mission Impossible. I yeah. agree with that, yeah. Yeah, that's just how it is, man. I mean, and for one, they're, you know, like, they're different. They're not true. They're, they're not big, uh, they're not big sequels. Mm -hmm. You know, they're based, sure, they're based on, one is based on a property, one has a big director's name to it, and a, in Tom Cruise and Mission Impossible is well known, but uh, people are just seeing them as being kind of different from what we just had in June. Sure, and there's a, the Mission Impossible franchise is interesting because kind of it's reinvented itself several times. You can forget like that first movie, like the big action set piece, kind of the end of the helicopter and the train. But the most part, it's, it's like an action thriller. But I think over time, it's kind of become this spectacle entertainment. But it's all yes, yeah, so you have CGI effects and you have all that green screen, but a lot yeah. of that practical stuff too that feels like that kind of old fashioned movie making. It's like I want to see Tom Cruise jump off of something because that's yeah. going to be entertaining, right? Yeah, I want to see. I want to see him and those teeth just. Yeah, just, yeah. I want to see him chopping air like he always yeah, does. No, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, people like that clearly. And also another thing that's contributing to blockbusters flopping, and we're going to get deep into deeper into this too. Yeah. But another thing that I think is not helping is a lot of people are getting a blockbuster experience on streaming. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're looking at Extraction Two right yeah. here. Mm -hmm. yeah. This type of movie would have started Arnold Schwarzenegger in the 1980s or something like. That. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And now you get it on Netflix. <laughs> so you know that's it's in the. the Home releases, you know, you're getting the blockbuster experience, plus the window between home releases and theatrical is kind of narrowed. Much a shorter, bit. yeah. Now it's like 45 days for some, some, for some yeah. you know, studios, some of their platforms. And Matt, I also add that when you start releasing all these movies together, man, you know, when these when these movies are coming out week after week, let's go ahead and, you know, let's talk about the the, 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 the the price of going to the movies these days. Expensive, especially for families. You know, let's, let's not ignore that. It costs a shitload of money to go see a movie. Yep. Because you're going to, especially if you're taking a family. Hundred dollars that night, easy, mm -hmm. easy. Should a hundred dollars get you what a uh, Pepsi? Like get you all the tickets, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And then you got to pay for the food. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can't. Families have to pick and choose what yeah. they want to see now. Mm -hmm. So listen, if they if they go see the Flash, and because they were told that was going to be the, the movie to see, <laughs> the greatest movie of all time, the greatest movie of all time, then they say, you know what? That's my movie budget. Uh, Indiana Jones is probably going to be out. Yep, they don't have to go to wait for mm -hmm. Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's an, man, going to the, the, to the movies is an, it's an investment in money and time. Yeah, a lot of time. And all these big blockbusters, for a reason, they have to be two and a half hours now. A lot of them. Yeah. Most of them. Yeah. Well, they better be. You paid a fortune to go yeah, in there and get your money. So, yeah. uh, so, you know, I laid out some things on why I see these movies flopping. And, and I gave an example of how movie releases happened years ago, decades ago, as compared to how they are now. It's, to me, it's just a glut and also competition with technology that's, that's, going, that's coming right now and finances. But what do you think? Uh, I mean, God, there's, there's so many things. One, one thing I've definitely noticed, I feel like a lot of these movies are the victims of overproduction where they mm -hmm. had, they're throwing hundreds upon hundreds of, of millions of dollars, like at these budgets. And it's like, it's not like making the movies actually better. It's just, it's, you're just, just, you're just putting more green screen, more CGI. And then the story that the characters, they always feel secondary. I feel like a lot of people have felt that way. And we've had a lot of these films that have kind of felt that way for a while. You know, past people would say, uh, since like 2020, you know, or yeah, 2021. Yeah. And I think people just kind of gotten sick of that. And where it's like, maybe that's why. And again, the word of mouth on all of these movies are just, it's not there. It's not good. I was like, that's the, that's the case. I'm not going to go. You know, I feel like that's playing into it. I'm going to save money for something else. Man, you know? I've heard that so many times. I've heard this phrase so many times. Mm -hmm. I'll wait for streaming. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's the, the people are used to waiting now. Mm-hmm, you know, once mm-hmm. they once they spend that money on that one film, yeah, and especially it felt like, well, shit, that wasn't even really worth it. That wasn't getting like, money's worth it. Yeah, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm waiting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, that's it's a lot to ask of people to keep seeing these movies, and I don't get it, man. Uh, what is going on with the, budgets? With, 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 yeah, with the budget. Like, here's my thing: when it comes to ticket sales, I took. I'm not. It, this isn't a flex. I just took two classes of movie appreciation. One of the things that was hammered in was into me is that ticket sales is still one of the fastest ways to show uh, that people want to actually do something before streaming. No, across the Spider Verse, its numbers are getting up. It's it's dominating so far in the summer, and you know I don't know how long they're going to keep it in there. You know they normally keep it like a month or two, uh, three months sometimes. But uh, based on the voice work across seas in the Oriental, uh, it's it's probably going to be good. I, I'm not sure it's it's crossed the threshold, but ultimately, yeah. It's like the budgets are insane right now. It's almost like that there's like an apparatus. Like, listen, this this is this this is this is what we're gonna do for this particular blockbuster. It's gonna have a two hundred fifty million dollar budget no matter what. And it's like that doesn't. But why? What, what's you, the reason for? You ain't impressing anybody yeah. anymore. You remember back in the day when you, when you told people you had a two hundred dollar uh, two hundred million dollar budget? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are like, ooh, oh shit, that's gonna be good. Yeah, yeah. Today it's like why? Mm-hmm. People are saying that's where's it going? It's uh, unnecessary. Yeah, people are saying that's too much. And I feel like because. Whether you're curling or crunching, running or riding, lifting or lunging. I was saying there's too much. That's why I hate And I feel like because of that mentality, like filmmakers have that, it's like for Indiana Jones, like especially for Indiana Jones in this case, what I just saw, which I personally thought was a thoroughly mediocre film, had maybe a couple of good months of like Harrison Ford, but there's so much about the movie that did not work. And one of the things that didn't work about that movie, I would say, is just the aesthetic. Like why did it have all those CGI? stuff on top of that. That's not what Indiana Jones looks like. And I think people recognize that. They go like, well, that doesn't look like what, what I'm used to seeing. It, it, it's too much. It looks too fake. It looks yeah. too inauthentic. And, yep. and it's, it's the filmmakers. It's, it's the it's the studios. It's all this that they, they don't seem to realize that. Man, today, $250 million. People know that shit ain't, it's too much. Mm-hmm. You know, the people, and, and you know, you're asking, you're asking so much of us to spend our money to go see these movies, man. And now we're seeing the same shit over and over again. Yeah. And people are just kind of like, you know what? All you're doing is just, it, it's showing now. People feel like all this money's wasted because all this CG in these movies. Yeah. I'll, I'll tell you where the money went. It's so easy to, to, to I'm not saying it's easy, but you know, a lot of effects kind of look the same these days they because they are, they are done by, you know, all of the CGI. Mm-hmm. Now I remember back in the day right. where you want to show yeah. your money, you know, you made rubber creatures and shit, you yeah, know, yeah, practical all, stuff. all practical stuff, you know, you blew somebody up and it, you know, it looked like a real person Some blew up. Squibs, squibs and yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. made a prosthetic a head of somebody exploding and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Now you want to impress somebody with the money. That's where it went. Yeah, of Today it's like, oh, what'd you spend your money on? More computers. Yep. All right, cool. More processing power. Yeah. So he can see CGI Indiana Jones jump a <laughs> CGI train <laughs> while his buddy screams at him with a CGI head. It's like, that's what it all is now. <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's just like, this doesn't look like the those films that people grew up on that they that they love that were yeah. those great blockbusters. There's another thing why people are not and they, they don't give a shit about your budget because yeah. you're gonna talk about how you spend three hundred million dollars on a movie and then you're gonna charge us twenty dollars to go see the shit and then we get into the flash yeah. and it looks like shit. It's awful. And it's like where did the money go? Yeah. You know, but if if you're gonna make shitty CGI, mm-hmm. I can just yeah I can just stay home. Mm-hmm. All right. People <laughs> say I can wait. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I'll maybe effects finish by the time it gets you know it gets to streaming I doubtful at this point <laughs> that in the flash does have some of the worst cgi i've seen honestly uh it was some of the worst cgi i've seen since something like cats or gods yeah. of egypt i was like oh, oh my god bad? you spend all this money how is it that you spend all this money on these effects and then when the movie's done the effects artists come back and say well i didn't get paid yeah i know you know so where's the money going <laughs> Gross. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Where is this money going? No one sees your big budget as impressive anymore. A lot of people see it as being too opulent. Yep. You know, bragging, uh, you know, trying to sell us on your budget. Don't sell us budget. Sell us on the movie. Yeah. And by the way, when you sell us on a movie, don't sell us on one every week because that's going to get that, that that's going to piss people off too. Mm-hmm. It starts mm-hmm. making people tired. And while we're speaking of computers, I do believe that that is another reason why we have an overabundance of blockbusters now. As I said, and I was, you know, I wasn't joking. Back when they were doing more practical effects, and I'm not one of these nerds that you know uh, who's a purist about practical effects i am not i i love cg i do i do when it's done right to tell a story and it looks impressive however because i think we're in this digital age now Mm -hmm. where we're not really using film that much anymore production is faster sure ending is faster effects are faster sometimes i think that it's just so streamlined that we produce movies faster that uh and and put them out faster now the technology's made it easier to do things yes we 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 really did you know a lot of uh a lot of the movies that came out back in the day, the reason why we didn't have a uh, you know one every week is because they couldn't. 
I mean, you know, they shot on film. It had to be processed. A lot of this stuff was still edited by hand. Mm -hmm. Practical effects took time. You know, you could not just shoot a movie and put it out as quickly as you can today. Sure. And I think it's too, I'm, again, I use this term relatively. I think it's too easy to make a blockbuster no, today. No, very, very true. And put it out one after and another. And it's like they're all fighting each other. There's so much competition. And we only have so much time, viewing time for these types of movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Agreed. man. Agreed. I don't know though, you know, I, I don't, and I don't know how this is going to, I don't know how this is going to change. I mean, something has to change because this weekend when Indiana Jones came out, I mean, you know, there are a lot of people were betting on nostalgia with this. And I think we all knew, listen, even the people who love Indiana Jones and I, I like the movie, you know, I don't love it. I think it's got some major problems in there. Yeah. Definitely a lackluster film to be Indiana Jones last movie. The swan song. This is like, the best you can do. You up, didn't you? Cause you ain't going back to that. No. But uh, you know, I, I think even the people who love this movie the most, they had you had to know that it's so crowded right now, the playing field for blockbusters, that this was not going to make a hundred million dollars on the opening weekend. No, you know, it just it just wasn't. There's a, there's a couple other things like with Indiana Jones specifically because they they they, they were very confident. They released this at Cannes like six weeks ago. It's like, oh, everyone's yeah. gonna love our movie, and it came out and it got all those really negative reviews, pretty mixed reviews. And you had six weeks of negative press about yeah. the, the, this film, and that I think just ate at people's expectations. Like, oh, I guess I can wait then. Plus, you're coming off of a terrible legacy sequel of Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, yeah. which has been sitting with people for 15 years in the pop culture uh, uh, zeitgeist. And that's a big thing. And I also think like the marketing of movies hasn't been good. Yeah. And also do, you know what? And got another hyper chat drop right here. This is from Space Cowboy. He says, put out a good movie and people will come. Top Gun proved that last yeah, year. And true. you know what? Fantastic word mouth. Space Cowboy, you are 100% correct when you say that this movie was something that really earned people's money and time. Not bad, kid. And what I worry about most I love you guys. People, yeah. there's a point where we've reached blockbuster fatigue to the point that people can actually look at something now and start to feel. Years ago where, you know, people were watching movies and the movies were skating by barely with story, mm -hmm. but you were, you know, you were hoping to get us with all your flash and your money and, you know, all your effects and whatnot and your big name stars. I, I don't think that matters anymore. With, with, with people getting so much choice today, yeah. you know, you get, you not only, and you're fighting, you're fighting shows also. No, true, yeah. Big, well-produced, Big budget shows. And, uh, you know, you're fighting those shows. You're going up against the movies that are, that, are, that are coming out on streaming that rival blockbuster films. So a lot of people feel like I can get this shit anywhere. If you want me to go to the theater and watch your movie, you better be doing something kind of special. Yeah. And I think fatigue has kind of kicked in to where people are like, I just want something different. I'm not, you know, some snob, a pretentious person. I mean, like the, I'm not even like these moviegoers that, uh, you know, there are, are, are movie buffs that are, you know, looking at story more than I, more than I do. I, you know, a lot of people are saying, I'm your average moviegoer. I'm just going to get entertained and just leave the house a little bit. But even now, if I have to leave the house, it better be worth leaving the house for because I can see this shit at home. You know, Spider Spider Verse offered us something different. Yeah, I even think that's why people are are into Barbie. You know, I think people are just like you know, I'm just it just looks like something you're not used to seeing all the time. Yeah, yeah it's just something that just feels a little different. Well, that's the benefit of like with Spider Verse in particular. It's like it's animation style. I feel like that is unique. We don't see that type of animation yeah. style on television. Just a lot in theaters. Like okay, that already stands out. But yeah. also, you had years upon years. This this movie is, is doing in term, commercially at the very least is doing infinitely better than its predecessor because you also had years of just positive word of mouth for that film. It's like, hey, this was a quality product right here. Yep. So it makes you anticipate the sequel. And the sequel doesn't come out like the next year because like when the original movie came out like 2018. So it's been quite some time yeah. since then. Yeah. You know, it's been five years. No, you're right. Mm -hmm. And also consider this. Look look how word of mouth was for these for two movies that came out mm -hmm. and how it affected the, the box office for them. Yeah. Spider-Verse had all these cameos here. And they use those cameos effectively, man. They those, yeah, they use those cameos. They weren't just like, oh, look at look at this, recognize that. You know, they weren't doing it for again cheap nostalgic uh, uh, applause. You know, they they used it as part of their narrative. Yeah. And people, when they talked about this film, they were talking about how clever that was. Mm -hmm. Now think about how the word of mouth got on a uh, on the flash when people oh saw, the, God, saw yeah. those shitty cameos that they had. Oh, I, I hate to, I don't, I don't want to spoil anything for anyone, but they they had a big Easter egg dump at the end of the movie and it was all these cameos from different Supermans and Batmans and they look like shit and what happened? People stopped talking about, oh shit, they had this, this person show up and this person show up. No, they said that, but they also said, yeah, and they look like shit too. They look, they look oh, terrible right? and th there was no point to them being there. Like they have no impact on the plot. They're just, they just kind of stand there dead-eyed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, they do. Watching the Flash going like, The only one that looked normal was Nicolas Cage. Yeah, yeah, yeah well. Because yeah. he looks crazy yeah, anyway. I suppose so. <laughs> now that you have spectacle everywhere and you're getting it all the time, it doesn't feel special anymore. That's right, yeah. Kind of reaping what they've sown. Yeah, and mm -hmm. I'm not trying to pick on Marvel. I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to even no. blame Marvel for anything, but... Uh, you can blame DC for a lot. I mean, the DCEU, I mean, for, for years delivering subpar blockbuster superhero fare to the point where now people don't even want to go see those movies. No. To the point where it's like every major release, with the exception of, well, I mean, 
uh, there's only like one DCEU film to make like a billion dollars. That was Aquaman. Yeah. <laughs> Since that uh, time, this, with the exception of the Joker and the Batman, all those films have lost money. Yep. Wonder Woman 1984 lost money. Birds of Prey lost money. And every big DC release since Black Wait, Adam was lost. Wonder Woman. Yeah. I didn't see and Marvel's it. putting out Wonder stuff, Wonder every, you know, the new one. every month almost. Yeah, I know. Like, that looks like this. Tom Joker, though. When, when you, listen, I, I'm going to be that old man. When I was a kid, <laughs> you know what I'm... <laughs> I'm be honest. Those graphics look like shinier versions of uh, of Spy Kids, like better done graphics. It it doesn't look impressive world building. It looks like the Spy Kids three game over graphics. Mm. Oh, this this would blow your mind. Sure, this of course. Be, this was the event I was talking about. Yeah, you stop your life to go see something like this. It don't feel special anymore. Yeah. Well, my whole thing is now it's like okay, you have all these major flops, Maybe yeah. uh, and because uh, also you, you imagine like, even for like DC, this is gonna be like one of the worst years or Warner Brothers, yeah, the worst year for them yeah. of all time. Blue Beetle, Aquaman, you know, and all these other big uh, projects. Even even I mean, Disney has had so many losses this year. Do you feel like that's going to lead to some major changes? Do you think we're going to go back to the mid tier movie, which kind of disappeared for like a very long long time? I mean, you have some studios that still kind of do that, but but most don't. And I wonder if we're going to see a resurgence of those kind of films just because they, it's only yeah. for a profit. I mean, it looks like. You're gonna have to. You're gonna mm-hmm. have to like time it out to it because uh, Bob Iger at Disney already said we gotta pull it back. Mm-hmm. I mean, <laughs> think about it. You know, I mean, I was looking at June, really focusing on that because I want to compare it to June of 1984. Sure. But well. before June, we had some underperforming films. Oh yeah. You know, Fast X. Yeah. Shit, I went on my TV and it said it's already here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that was like well, about three weeks after the movie was out. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah. And so it, this movie did. I'm like, I'm not saying it did terribly. It did. It, it did okay, but not near what they wanted. No. It got. It did bad enough to where Vin Diesel trying to blame Jason Momoa now. <laughs> For that shit, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He stole my movie from yeah. me. He saw the good moments. <laughs> yeah, he it's, it's his fault. And, has, and that thing has like a three hundred plus million dollar budget. Yeah, mm-hmm. okay. Where did money go. Mm-hmm. You know, the money went to be. De- Ready? Go. What? Everyone is raving. Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning is a roller coaster of oh. insanity. Oh, you have no idea. It's it just the charts went like right into it all weird. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Where did money go? Mm-hmm. You know, the money went to be ridiculous. Yeah. Be to, dumb. to drive down a, 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 a damn <laughs> to drive down a wall get out of here with explosions that man. chasing you dj kent dropped a dollar to say i'll take five movies like plane over one flash i have a you know what i talk bad about plane yeah because it looked ridiculous in the trailers I, it did man but let me tell you something i have a whole lot more respect for plane now mm-hmm. and what they did because plane and dj kent is right plane delivered about the same amount of action and entertainment as some of these big ass bloated blockbuster movies i bet they kept that movie cheap too yeah i wonder how big yeah, that yeah. was one on one Deadpool dropped ten dollars to say these big CGI blockbusters are competing with video games too. I didn't think about yeah, that. That's oh, a good point. Mm-hmm. yeah, I, mean, I didn't even think about that, man. That's a great point. And they give you all the spectacle and they give you uh, hours upon hours of that kind of content. Yeah, uh, and he says the God of War games are a yeah. better cinematic experience no, than most of these movies. Easily, and you know what? You paid seventy dollars and. Uh, like you said, it'll last you for months. Yep. Mm-hmm. So instead of paying seventy dollars for a damn bag of popcorn and just being in there for what two hours, yeah, going out there with your family to you see these films and leave disappointed, a mediocre experience. I mean, all the Uncharted games are easily better than any Indiana Jones movie that's come out for the last twenty years. So yeah, they're all that's true. great. That yeah. is true, and it has spectacle, but it has good story and characters yeah. people love. You had you don't you don't always have to be a two hundred million dollar plus. You don't even have to be a hundred million dollar plus movie to to be something that feels like a sci fi or action blockbuster yeah, an epic. Yeah. Um, no, you don't. You know. I remember, I remember back in uh, I forgot what summer this was. It was probably '86, but uh, this movie came out, and this movie was one of the, the big surprises of the summer. And it was a sci-fi film, it was an action film, and it rivaled, you know, except for maybe again spectacle, still though in creativity, action, fun, uh, premise. It rivaled any blockbuster that was out there. You probably know what I'm talking about. Robocop. Robocop. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's right, Chris. <laughs> yeah, they're all movie buffs. <laughs> Confirm. <laughs> Chaos. Yeah, and yeah. Fly, Bobby. That came out, and that was like that was rated R, also. Yeah, man. I, don't you miss like that mid-tier rated R blockbuster film? Because we don't do. get those anymore. I do. That's Robocop gone. was that, and we had uh, and then you had uh things like Total Recall. Yeah, it's, yeah, nineteen ninety. Yeah, yeah. All, all that, all those sports Terminator, movies. Terminator, Terminator. Eighty four. That was also in eighty four, wasn't it? Uh, was in Terminator yeah. and then Terminator two was ninety one. Yeah, ninety one. Yeah. Yeah, man. I think that. I mean, what, I'll give you my opinion. What I think. What do you sure. think? Sure. I mean, you know. 
it's 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 disappointing because I think at the end of the day, people are just kind of sick of mediocrity. Mm -hmm. And there's just been mediocrity of so many of these blockbusters, I think, for just a lot of people for so long that it leaves them feeling disenfranchised because they all they all look the same. They're all part of that 250 million, 300 plus million apparatus where this is what they all have to look at. You have to adhere to these filmmaking sensibilities, the Seneca sensibilities. And I think people have just kind of gotten tired of that because of, of, of a variety of different reasons. But one of the, uh, the big things is the advent of technology. I can watch all this stuff at home. I have all these great, well-produced TV. I mean, we were still in a golden era of TV. Like really ever since yeah. the Sopranos to like now, it's still incredible. Some mm -hmm. of these storylines, which would have been reserved for like films in like the seventies or in the eighties or even the nineties. But now that's changed yeah. because now the only thing that students want to do is something like super indie, super small, you know, for their Oscar campaigns or then these huge big blockbuster things. And people are like, uh, no, I don't want to see those things. No. It's the same thing over and over again. And of course they had to do something because this is this, this, now, now we're at the point where Hollywood is paying attention because it's never been about quality that much. No, it's naturally. always about money. Yeah. So if you got June where it was, one flop after another, mm -hmm. something's wrong. And they're gonna start paying attention because Hollywood, don't fuck with that money. That's, that's <laughs> the one thing that'll make them change at the end of the day. Yeah. Because the only winner this month is, um, is Spider-Man. Spider-Man across the spider -Man. Everything else is just underperformed or flopped. That is true. No, that is true, man. Yeah, this came back to number one after mm -hmm. a while. So their model back in the day was when school was out, that's why June was front loaded. Yeah. You might get something that leads in, in May that leads up to it. But June was the month where they really start to release that big, their big movies like you know, that they thought was surefire bets. And that's why you had Gremlins. Ah, shut up there. That's why you had Gremlins coming out in, in that June, man. You know, kids were fresh out of school. You know, that's why Ghostbusters came out that year, man. Kids were fresh out of school, you know? And I can, here's another thing. Even then, I think being, having those movies come out so close to each other at one time in June did hurt them back then. I think that Star Trek three suffered yeah, because it couldn't compete with Gremlins and it also couldn't compete with uh, Ghostbusters. And also those are just better movies too. <laughs> yeah, and they were, yeah. <laughs> That's the other that thing. movie was, that movie was yeah. yeah. And, and where it got out, yeah. now if it wasn't competing, it might've done a little bit better. Mm -hmm. That movie I think was, as far as that summer goes, that movie was like in the top 10 of summer movies. That was like seven, yeah. or eight, something sure. like that. That movie's kind of even guilty of like things that typical modern day blockbusters do, where it's just like it's too long and you're retconning something that was kind of cool about the, the previous film. Like, you yeah. killed Spock! He's back in the sequel. Don't worry, everybody. He's alive. Immediately, yeah. Immediately, <laughs> that fool like, came that's back. That's really stupid. <laughs> It'll be one thing if these movies were amazing. That's amazing. The thing, but they're not. No, I've come out of every one of these movies giving them at least like a matinee or something, you know, for, yeah. for, from our, yeah. our rating system. Yeah, even you know, Reynolds, yeah, for me. Yeah, you know, but you know, none of these have blown my mind. No. I've been like, you know, they feel like everything else out there. The only thing that's kind of an outlier for me was Dungeons and Dragons. I thought that was like, that was a really good entertainment. I mean, it was, it was great. But didn't do well for, I think, a variety of reasons, you know, some of which we even discussed because it looked similar to things that we've seen before. Just the CGI, but it served the story there. It was actually yeah. intelligently used and also it's based on a property, which is a niche. It's so, very much a niche. You know, I love Dungeons and Dragons, but, uh, that's another thing that's really, that's really sad about having to compete with so much. Because it came out like right after Super Mario Bros. or before. I'm trying to remember because it was around the same it, time. Think, was it before? Maybe. Leash the greatest evil the world has ever known. But we're gonna fix it. You know what? That's that's the sad thing about the you know the, the situation we have right now mm -hmm. is that when you get an actual blockbuster that does feel kind of fresh and does feel very good, it is you know but what most people consider you know the exception from everything else that's out there. Uh, everything working so well together from the effects to the characters to the story. You know, sometimes these movies suffer. Yeah. Because one, again, people are going to look at it like, well, this could be just like everything else I've mm -hmm. seen. Also, if you don't, this movie needed time to breathe. Yes. You have to have this. You're right. It's a niche film that let's not also forget that this still is a kind of attached, as you say, it's paying for the sins of <laughs> that other shit ass yeah. Dungeons and Dragons movie. 20 years ago. Tw still, yeah, that's still on people's mind how mm -hmm. bad it was that bad. 20 years later, people are saying, I ain't seeing this shit. Mm -hmm. yeah, this is called Dungeons and Dragons. Last uh, time I was the sequel, I, mean, I, yeah. I don't need to see. <laughs> Last yeah. time I was hanging out with the dragons and in that dungeon, it was it was not a good experience. Mm -hmm. Jim was yelling at me and uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> the effects were terrible. Uh, yeah. yeah. But this needed a little time to breathe because if, if, if there wasn't other movies coming up all of a sudden, that's it. Word of mouth probably would have helped this movie. Definitely. But other people moved on to other things so quickly. Mm -hmm. And word of mouth was great on this. It was very positive. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, 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 yeah, we gotta do something, y'all. Some, something's gonna have to happen because uh if I was a person working in Hollywood, I, my, this Monday, I would be like, after Indiana Jones, I'd be like, this shit is not working. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there Makes you sense. go. Yep. All right. Thank you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. I have to hurry up and end it. Uh, but yeah, something to actually consider. You know, I'm all over the place and I look at other things specifically because, yeah, it's it's like that. It's, it's something you have to actually consider.